Rain. Good morning. Buenos dias. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Praise God. Good to welcome you. And I know that it's a beautiful day in Southern California. And uh, God has been gracious to us. So let's look to the Lord. If you can stand, stand please. And let's ask the Father to come and descend the Holy Spirit here with us. Father, we love you. We worship you. We give you praise and glory and honor. And we pray, Lord, that your name be glorified. You be exalted here in our midst this morning. Father, we're grateful to be called your children, the children of God. We are your people and the sheep of your pasture. Thank you again, Father, for uh, another week you've given us, Lord. And we begin this one in the house of the Lord, praising you, Lord, and thanking you for the many benefits and uh, that you bestow upon us daily. Thank you again for your people. Thank you for the families. Thank you, God, for helping us through. And now, Lord, as we give ourselves to you, Lord, be glorified and lifted up. Be exalted in our praise, and we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Rise, we 
Amen. I know I need Jesus today. How about you? I, I couldn't live without Jesus. You know, I, you know I, I'm thankful this morning for my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There's nothing like it. You know, nobody knows my heart like Jesus, you know. Nobody knows your heart like Jesus. We cannot, we cannot be dependent on other people's relationship with Jesus Christ. We individually have to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It is so rich when we learn that, when we learn to cry out to God, when we cast our cares upon the Lord. I mean, I've, I've never had it better. I, and I've had relationships with different types of people, but there's nothing like a personal relationship with Jesus. You want to know why? Because he loves us. You know, and he, of course, the Lord does say he chastens those he loves too, so we got to be ready for that. But he's, he's still molding us. He's shaping us to become more like him. It's a humbling experience, you know, especially for those of us who have been kind of proud in their lives. Especially us men, right? Sometimes God has to humble us, you know, so we can come to that place of tenderness and humility so that we can cry out to the almighty God. Amen? Hey, I don't claim to have it all together, but I tell you what, Dean, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Are you? 
I'm satisfied with Jesus. And you know, I, I've been living this life for about 61 years, you know, and I've done this and that and the other. But you know, I, it all comes back to Jesus. There's nothing better than a relationship with Jesus. He's the only one that satisfies my soul. What an awesome thing, you know. And not only that, but one day he's going to take me to heaven with him and an eternal life. Is anybody excited about that today? We have eternal life. Eternal life with Jesus forever. You know, I was kind of doom and gloom this morning in Sunday school. We were talking about death, and I don't like to talk about death, you know. But, you know, the Bible does say it's appointed unto man once to die, and then comes the judgment. We all got to die one day, amen? But are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Savior? Is your heart right with Jesus? That's the important thing, you know. We can't turn away from God because he says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. We need to stay connected to Jesus this morning. Father, help us to understand this morning how much you love us, Lord, and how much you want to have a personal relationship with us as your church, God. Lord, bless your people this morning, God. Prepare our hearts this morning to receive a word from you, God. We know you have a message for us this morning, God. Help us to take that message, Lord, to apply it to our lives, God, that we may be able to be all that we can be in Christ Jesus according to your purpose and your will, Lord, for our individual lives, Lord. And, Lord, I just want to remember those this morning who are sick, Lord, that, that need a touch from you this morning. Remember our brother Muncie, Lord, as he recovers and gets rehabilitated. God, remember him, Lord. Remember Jesus Roldan, God. Lord, save him, Lord, for that purpose, Lord, that he may live to testify of your glory and honor, God, that once and for all he would fully surrender to you, God. Lord, don't let him go on to eternity without you, I pray, God. Give him that opportunity. Joe Palfrey, God. Lord, get a hold of his heart, Lord. Do not allow the enemy to triumph over his life, God. Bring him to the cross where he belongs, God, in full repentance, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And others that may have infirmities in our bodies like Sister Joyce, Lord. And others that may be struggling in their bodies, Father. We pray your touch upon them, Lord. That you give them strength for each new day of life that you give to them in their elderly age, God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we just want to invite your Holy Spirit's presence uh, this morning, God, and that you prepare us to receive from you, God. And we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor and all of God's people shouted, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Give him praise this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy to receive praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Gabriel. If you can just pay attention to the screen, we're going to have the announcements. It will only take a minute. Praise God for that. That's good. Okay. Amen. I think we have all the announcements. Ladies, if you are planning to go to the women's retreat, Sister Lucia needs to see you right after church. If you just go here to in front of the patio where the benches are, if you just meet her there, she just got some information that she needs to give all of you. So please make sure that you're there right after church. Okay. Uh, we're so happy that all of you are here this morning. We thank God for her, God's faithfulness every day and for the opportunity that we all have to be here. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that are in the hospital bed this morning. But thank God we are here today, so we have so much to be thankful to the Lord. Amen. You know, I'm going to invite all of you to just get your offerings ready. And I'll just, if we can forward, please. Uh, and let's go to the Lord this morning with gratitude in our hearts. You know, as we worship him. Uh, we've been worshiping him in song, and now we're going to worship him with our tithes and with our offerings. Lord, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are so good to us, Lord. And, and every moment, Father, that goes by, Father, we are so grateful because you never leave us or forsake us, Father. You are always there for us. Lord, you said in your word that you are a lamp and feet, Father, Lord. And 
We're so thankful, Father, Lord, because we are here this morning, Lord, and because we can worship you, we can honor you with song, Lord, and we can honor you with our presence. And, Lord, now we can honor you, Father, Lord, with our tithes and with our offerings. Bless everyone that's going to be giving with a cheerful heart this morning, Lord. Bless everyone, Father, that is here. And, Lord, we just give this offering unto you. We praise you and we worship you. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I've come too far to look back again. There is nothing behind. All the treasures I used to love have all faded from view. There's a new day ahead for me and you too. Well, my heartache is over for I left it. Where my new life begins I've come too far to look back My feet have walked through the valley I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers Desert places
We got a lot to do. We got to get busy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank God for Nancy Harmon. He, she wrote that song for you, girl. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. One, <laughs> glory to God. One, thank you, Jesus. One of my favorite songs. Too, I've come too far to turn back. Amen. And thank you for singing that song, man. I'll tell you. Hey, man, come on. <laughs> a great job, sis. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We're going to have to hear that one again. Isn't God good? Good to see you, sister Rebecca. Where you been? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope you're feeling better today. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you know, it's good to know that God is real. Uh, we've been called with a purpose, folks. And God has given us a goal. And uh, I want to try to just cast some light on that. I want to thank Pastor Walter for organizing our men's breakfast. And uh, <clears throat> even though our, our, our speaker did not show up, the Lord provided uh, Brother Williams to give us his testimony, and uh, it's, it was good. I enjoyed it. So, And the food, my goodness, we want to thank these ladies, Sister Rosa, Sister Helen, Sister, um, who else did I see in there? Sister Rosa Aguirre, uh, who? Desiree was in there too? I saw you. Yeah, yeah, you came out and and there was others. anyway. Olivia, Olivia, ¿dónde está Olivia? Oh, okay. Well, we want to thank these ladies. I'm telling you, it was good. We had plenty of food and it was good. And the salsa, my God. They even made a salsa without chili for me. Because you know, I mean. Uh, the doctor told me to cut out all the chili, so. But anyway, we're, we're thanking God. Thank you, Olivia, for being in the kitchen. We're just going to take these ladies out on a night out. Good to see you this morning. You begin to turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3. And if we haven't seen you in a little while, we're glad to see you this morning. And we're glad to have Irene. And uh, what's the old lady's? Uh, oh, I'm just kidding. Myrna, of course, uh, from the uh, Tawar family. Welcome. They came from family reunion, and uh, <clears throat> they, uh, you're only invited to the pool today with them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding you. Turn to Philippians uh, 3. Did I say 3? Okay, well, join me there. Philippians 3. <clears throat> Say, we all, we all have, a goal. have a goal. And so keep your heart open, your ears open, and try to listen uh, to see what God tells you about where you're at. In Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse, I believe it's 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung or garbage that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous which, righteousness, which is of God by faith. It's by faith, folks. That I may know him and, be, and, and, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after it that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He says, this one thing I do. So he says himself as a runner in a race, exerting all his strength and pressing on with intense concentration in order not to fall short of the goal that Christ has set for his life. And that's what I want you to keep before you today. God has set a goal before you, and it's your business, and you don't want to fall short of it. Amen? The believer's goal is not heaven, as some suppose, but rather knowing Jesus our Lord. And the question is, do you know him? Do you really know the Lord? Have you come to know him? Do you feel well acquainted with him? Are you getting to know him better each day? Are you growing like 2 Peter 3.18 says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. So we know from this passage that Paul's ambitions, what they were really all about in the uh, it wasn't just to excel. <clears throat> Some people cram the word like uh, they're going to get a prize for how much they can pack into their tiny little brains. But in 1 Corinthians 13, if you take a time this afternoon, verses 1 through 3, it just simply tells you that, uh, and Paul is speaking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, uh, and writes uh, this tremendous chapter on the excellency of the love of Christ. But he says that if you have all these gifts and if you're, you know, just beyond description, <clears throat> but you have no love or charity, uh, you're nothing. That's what the first three verses of 1 Corinthians 13 say. So again, I have made the statement many times to you, and from this pulpit, that if you want to be spiritual, if you truly want to be a child of God, be a loving person. Because love is the seal of perfection. There's no greater attainment. The first commandment says, but thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. Is your heart divided? Is it fickle? Or are you truly in love with Jesus See, this is the thing. And uh, you see that he explains to us later there in 2 Corinthians 5.14 that it was the love of Christ that constrained him, constrained us. It was going to motivate you and move you. The love of God. You know why a lot of people in the body of Christ are not very motivated or they don't go beyond any measure? to do is because they're not really in love with God. When you're in love with someone, you'll drive 10 hours during the night to reach your destination. <clears throat> when you're truly in love with someone, you go out of your way to go and buy that special gift, that special whatever, because you want it to be an expression of your most sincere and deepest emotion that you have, and it's love. You cannot bestow anything greater in anyone but that you love them. When people know you love them, I'm telling you, they'll go out of the way to do whatever. That's why it's going to be very hard for me to replace my wife with another human person because she did things for me 
solely for the expression of her love. Just to let me know. Not you, because she loved all you guys most of the time, but <laughs> she loved me all the time. The girl was just crazy about me. And she, she did it, and she mentioned it, and she showed it. I got letters to prove it to you that she wrote me back in the 70s and 80s. But what I meant to her, I, I, I'm humble. I cry. I go back and play an oldie but goodie, you know. And, and, and then I got to change it because then I fall deeper into a, a more sad situation. I think of suicide. I think of not going on anymore. I, I think of, you know, you say, Pastor, you, oh, yes, more than once. Because, you see, until you know an individual, a human being, in the depths of the of true expression of love, you don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> I was explaining this to my sister because she was trying to preach to me and get me out of my melancholy, whatever. And I tried to explain to her. I said, sis, I know you were married for a long time, but I just don't know. But I want to tell you something. And I began to relate to her how our relationship was and how deep we went. And later on, she apologized. She said, I'm I'm sorry, brother. I, I didn't understand. I said, that's right. It's the same way when <clears throat> a man loves a woman. It's, uh, it, it's something that you have to experience yourself. I'm going to tell you something right now. The most people that I know, and people even in this church, you have an, you have an experience, real depth of love. Most of you are nice people. Most of you care to a certain extent. But until you made it your business. I know we quote the scriptures. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy might. As well as strength. You don't have a clue what that means. Until you get down to it. And you begin to take it apart. And you begin to walk into it yourself. And you allow yourself <clears throat> to be <clears throat> melted and molded into that. You see, it's... Uh, it's something that I would challenge every one of you. Because <clears throat> I'm afraid that the day we see Jesus, many people are not going to feel real confident. Because Jesus is just going to be so far, it's going to blow them away. If some of the people that have testified to us about the Lord, <clears throat> when God revealed himself in some way, shape, or form, they felt like dead. You can read Daniel's experience, John on the Isle of Patmos. You can see. And until you have truly walked that way. And you know what? Can I tell you another secret? Look at me. Follow my finger. Every one of you longs for that deafness. Every one of you, see, your heart's yearning is to be wanted, is to be loved and received, and that's, that's right. But a lot of times, we don't get there because things get in the way. Personality traits. Little things that don't matter.
We must know Christ in his great compelling love. In comparison, all other knowledge really is unprofitable. It will profit you nothing to have been an outstanding brain surgeon or a scientist and yet not know the love of Jesus. You will not know nothing, honey. Nothing. Would you have been a brilliant evangelist with the greatest gift of oratory and, you know, have the full manifestation of the power of God in your life, but not to know the love of God, it's all in vain. You know why? Because our carnal nature is selfish. And that's what most of the time keeps us from reaching that goal. You almost have to divest yourself from everything that matters to you, whatever, and, 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 and give yourself about as pure as you can. But that's risky because we know we can get hurt. Are you hearing me? Ladies, that's why your husbands don't tell you everything about them because they're afraid it might be used against them. The love of God is not like that. It's sacrificial and unconditional. You see, Paul just didn't want a casual head knowledge of Jesus, but rather an excellent and abundant practical knowledge of the person of Christ with all saving wisdom and saving grace. I had a moment, I've told you about it, a contemplation where I looked up to heaven and I saw my wife leaning over some people and looked at me. But it, it seemed so kind of strange. I felt foreign. I felt far from her. And then I said to myself, my God, what kind of creature was this woman really? I didn't get to know her more than I could have. That's why I recommend to couples, <clears throat> forget all the things about life and getting and this and that. You are the most important ingredients in your relationship. So you don't have this, you don't have that. Who gives a ding dong? But get to know that person you're living with. Get to know that person you pledged your love to. Get to know them in depth. So that when they're gone or you're gone, you'll have full satisfaction. Okay? That's what Jesus said, oh, that my love may remain in you. And that's what he wanted. He didn't leave them a Cadillac in every driveway. He didn't pray for, he prayed for unity and for love among the people. A new commandment I give you that you love one another. We haven't learned nothing, people. We talk about religion, we talk about theology, we talk about family problems and squabbles. We haven't learned about Jesus and his love. How great is his love. Paul has spoken of all his Jewish privileges, all his accomplishments, all his attainments and recognition. He has scaled the ladder of success in his Jewish upbringing. He speaks of the worldly attainments and equipments and enjoyments which he he knew would stand in competition with Christ. 
You know what he said? <laughs> that he counted them but loss, garbage, trash. And that he would be more than glad to allow himself to suffer the loss of all those things. Church, apart from Christ, nothing matters. Nothing will endure. Nothing will remain. It's all going to be done away with. And it's all going to be done new. But according to that spirit. According to that love of God. And if we are not there. We're going to feel like we're out of place. Even some are going to say. Hey Lord but hey hold on. Didn't we do? Weren't we there? When we gave for the van to Mexico. And he's going to say, I'm sorry. Get away from me. I never knew you. Oh, God, how terrible that's going to be. Do you love God? Have you fallen in love with Jesus? Does it mean more to you than anything else you bury your breath? Are you willing to give it all up? this very moment to have all of him. That's what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Paul not only gave up all his honors and advantages as a Jew, as a Pharisee, but submitted himself to all the disgrace and suffering which go along with the Christian faith and the preaching of the gospel. He was whipped, he was beaten, he was chased, he was, they tried to kill him several times. He endured it all. He was out shipwrecked over the ocean in the Mediterranean, floating on a board. He went to prison and listen, ultimately, he walked under his own power and laid his head on the chopping block and had his head cut off. How you like them apples? You love God that much? Oh, I don't want to go to church because it's too cold then. The pastor preaches too long. His loss was but a willing given up or exchange, if I can use that word. Only recognize that in comparison to Christ, those attainments were but garbage. Church, it is worthy to note what a remarkable change and effect the knowledge of Christ can have upon an individual. The brother who testified in our men's breakfast yesterday said to us, and I, I know that he was moved because it was the moment that changed his life. When that man received him, did not charge him with anything or accuse him, but said, you know what? Me and the Lord, we're going to work it out. Change his life. He went from a dope head and prison guy and desirable discharged on the army to today. Being a doctor for over 30 years, a doctor, chiropractic. Now, he didn't say all about his accomplishments, but he's been flown around the world by important people to teach things that he has learned. He's not a guy that's going to go around trying to impress you, but he's for real. He's for real. I love that black man. You know, it changes men, alters their sense of values, their judgments, their manners, literally makes them new men all over. 
We come to hate what once we enjoyed. Men came to prefer the knowledge of Christ above riches and fame, above all of the treasures of this world. Remember Moses? He esteemed greater riches than the riches of Egypt to suffer with God's people in those mud pits. But thank God, you know what happened to those men? They laid hand, they laid hand on heaven. If you're not ready to live in heaven, you're not ready to serve the Lord. You don't know the Lord. You see, when you come to Christ, he gives you eternal life. Life everlasting. <clears throat> and you'll never go from him because when you weigh things out, you'll say, my God, I can't be that stupid to change this pot of lentil soup for this T-bone steak. Are you hearing me? I hope you know what a T-bone steak is. If not, go buy you one today. You won't buy hamburger meat again. The righteousness I depend upon is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness is of God by Christ Jesus, ordained and appointed by God himself. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord Isaiah said, our righteousness. Say it with me. God is my righteousness. You see, it is by faith in his blood. As Romans 3.25 says. There's a righteousness of faith. Christ has become righteousness unto us. And faith in Christ is accounted unto us for righteousness, just like it was for Father Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. It was credited to his account. Nobody could take it from there. It was an entry, an entry in the bank of heaven. He entertained the thoughts of knowing God, that he might know him, he said in verse 10, I believe, that I may know him, he said. Didn't he say that? Amen. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. So much of the scriptures I'm realizing more and more. We go right over them. You know, when you really know him here, you're going to obey him. You're going to believe in him. And Paul was desirous to know the power of Christ's death and resurrection. Killing sin in him and raising him up to newness of life thus having the full benefit of Christ's death and resurrection in his justification. Sometimes when I muse, as I was doing the other day, and thinking, Lord, I think of the moments that God has delivered me. Delivered me from the very edge of destruction. Deliver me when the devil had me oh, dangling there and God delivered me. And I think and then I go, oh God, thank you, you delivered me, God. If I would have made just a little more step, I would have perished and failed completely. What a, what a, what. but God delivered me. God in time set me free. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he'll deliver you. And he'll deliver anyone that, you know, in peril, he'll be there. I don't have the time this morning to relate to you moments, desperate moments that I've had in my life 
that not even my family and my children know about. Like David said, oh, my feet were just about ready to slip. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God is so good. He loves you. He'll never disappoint you. Trust him. Walk in him. Live in him. Embrace him. And don't let him go for a moment. You need him more than life itself. After all, there's no one that can give you life like Christ. Give you life everlasting. Oh, I love him this morning. We conform to Christ's death when we die to sin as he died for our sin. When we are crucified with Christ, the flesh and the affections of it die. And the world is crucified unto us and we to the world by the virtue of the cross of Jesus Christ. We had the opportunity to be in a Catholic watch, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, well, it was really a viewing, really. Well, we got there and we got caught up in there. <laughs> we didn't realize they were going to do the rosary. And if you've ever had to endure one of those things, be ready because you might just die. If you're a believer, and I'm telling you, it was tough. But then again, I myself, as well as Brother Cat, had the privilege to <clears throat> reconsider and think about our relationship with God. Apart from that religious spirit and all that Catholic stuff, how foreign, how distant it is when you really know the Lord personally. You don't have to try to figure it out. You don't have to try. You feel it because it's in there. It's in your heart. It's the life of Christ in you. And his righteousness has set you free. Therefore, you will not be brought under any yoke of bondage. But yet you see that priest and those people there repeating and all. He pulled out his little rosary and said that it was the most powerful thing against sin and against the devil and what have you. Brother Cat said, well, what are you going to do, choke the devil with that thing? Or what? <laughs> they think praying the rosary. It has five stations, and they go, you know, you get dizzy hearing the Mary Mother of God full of, you know, you just, it's just terrible. Terrible. It was agonizing. <clears throat> and uh, we could hardly wait to get out of there. But we felt pity for the people caught up in that. Paul also had his heart set of the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection of the dead in Christ. Why was Paul anticipating the resurrection? Well, I see that the simplicity and earnestness of soul are not mentioned as if he had already obtained the price or had it already in a bag. Nor that he had somehow a perfect, arrived into a perfect sinless state where he didn't have to worry about it. But even the most perfect, the most holiest saints still need cleansing and pressing every day. The Apostle Paul, under the conviction that where sin abounds, grace does much more abound, press forward with determination and zeal. To make sure he didn't come short of that race or fell out of the event in reaching the goal. He's going to get more grace and do more good. That's what he determined, praise God. His laying hold on us was to bring us to himself that we might know him 
and spend eternity in heaven with him. I love those words as he was going to leave the, the people when he said, if I go, I will come back and receive you unto myself. I love that. I cleave to that. Jeez, if, if I make another license plate thing, I'm going to put Jesus is coming back soon. He is coming, folks. Don't you, don't you worry about it. Don't you lose the hope. Jesus is coming back. America may never seem the same again, even after the midterms. Even if Mr. Trump comes back to the White House. But I'll tell you one thing. Jesus is coming back for you and me. That will not change. That is going to happen. So he determined that he would do one thing. The Apostle Paul said, and, and I believe that this was his great goal and concern, as he said in verse 13. Brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. There are some things that we should not forget, folks. Remember where he found you when he saved you? Remember the glorious moment when you felt free. You felt the victory flow into your heart and your soul was set free from condemnation. Whoa, hallelujah. Some of you used to shout. I don't know what has happened to you now, but you used to get happy. You used to say, praise the Lord once in a while. Now you just look down and look at your shoes. I don't know why you do that. The Lord's been so good to me. The best, the best things he forgot were the yesterday things. Those things that were behind, those things that were not worth spending your time on. Past labors, past accomplishments, past miracles, I guess, also. He reached forth, literally stretched himself forward towards his point. A violent, if you will, behavior for advancement in conformity to Christ. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven. How does it say? Suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. So that was his aim. I see who runs a race must never stop short of it. Never short of the end. So those who have Jesus in view must still press towards him. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finish of our faith. Why? Because Jesus is the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Don't put your eyes on the White House. It may turn gray. I don't know. Don't put your eyes on your bank account. You could go broke tomorrow. Your bank will foreclose. Hello? Don't put your trust on that. What is that retirement thing? 401k, whatever. You know? They could pass a thing and drain everything and you'd have nothing. Golden check, Social Security check, whatever. Pension check. You have all those continual uh, uh, advertisements on TV. Buy silver, buy gold. This is the best way to keep your money in gold. The Bible says, warn to you, rich man. You're going to take a bag of gold to buy a So even gold might lose its, its value or charm or whatever. Do you know the Lord? Is there an inkling or a modicum of desire in your heart to know God better, yeah. to go out boldly? This is the hour, church. Don't wait for tomorrow, okay? This is the time to make sure you're in tight with God. You're following. You're pressing. 
You're moving. You're making your way in there. You're not going to let nothing stop you, nothing hinder you. And you need to be willing and ready to say goodbye to everything. Because a trumpet could sound tonight. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? We don't even have to go home and feed the dog. Let the Antichrist feed him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad you came this morning. And I hope that something the Holy Spirit said to you regarding your love for God. You see, love won't wear old, folks. You can't wear it out. You can't love too much. That stupid song somebody sang, what's love got to do with it? Just that woman's stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. That's right. Love is a thing. Read the last part of the 1 Corinthians 13. Why? Because God is love. And everything's it's going to go by, but he'll be there. He that, how does that verse say? He that loveth not, for God is love. Please stand to your feet. I'm, I'm done preaching this morning. I'm so glad we could have these moments, church. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad he saved my soul and set me free. What a wonderful joy in my heart since Jesus came into my heart. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Shut yourself in with God there where you're standing. You and the Lord. If he would ask you like he asked Peter, do you love me? If you would hear his voice, <clears throat> do you love me? If you would hear him say this morning to you, do you really love me? He never has a hard time saying, I love you. For God so loved the world. He loves you, friend. This morning as you stand there, you and the Lord, deep crying unto deep, spirit to spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's why I like that old song. I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found in him a friend so long and true. I will tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one else could care for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. He really cares for us, church. He loves you. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. Father, we love you. 
We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for dying for us on the cross. Thank you for offering your precious blood, Lord, your sinless blood as the propitiation for our sins, for our salvation. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Help us not to lose sight of the goal <clears throat> that is to know you, Lord. To develop intimacy with you. To love you, Lord. May the cry of our heart be like the song we sang this morning. I need you, Lord, more than anything. Oh, God, help us to follow after you with a true heart, oh, God, in sincerity. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to draw closer to our God. Show us the way we pray. Show us, Lord. Help us to be sincere. Help us to be transparent, oh God, as we stand in your presence this morning. We give ourselves to you, Lord. We know we come short, dear God. We haven't loved you like we should. Forgive us, but draw us closer to you today. We want you, Lord. We desire you, Lord. We thank you for your love and your goodness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I because he first loved me. Thank you, Father. May your spirit go with us this morning. And God, reveal yourself to us in a greater way. Be with your people. Guide us, Lord. And most of all, Lord, Help us to let love rule in our hearts, not only towards you, but towards our neighbors. And we'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God.